What's up guys, welcome back to Logical Redstone. Today we're talking about data transfer. It's obviously a really common thing in Redstone to move data from one spot to another. So today I'm just gonna show you some ways to make it more compact and more elegant. Let's just start with the absolute basics. If you have one wire and you wanna send it to another location, the easiest and most straightforward way to do it is to have a single Redstone line. You get 15 strength, which means it runs out after 15 blocks. And at that point you need a repeater, which repeats it for another 15. If you want to get a little bit more strength out of it, you can actually put a block at the end and then a block at the start after this repeater again, and you'll get two extra blocks of length out of it. And if you're sending multiple signals at once where you might have any pattern come in at any time, you can just put the lines next to each other as long as they have a block of space in between because the redstone would interfere otherwise. But if you really hate that block of space and for example, you want it to be four wide for four lines, then you can actually stagger them, having two of them on the ground and two of them one up from each other and then blocking off the interference using these blocks. So when we do that, we can still have four individual lines all sending signal, but the input is staggered like this and it's much closer together and the output looks the exact same way. But if that's still not good enough, what you can do is actually use rails because rails don't interfere with each other. The only problem is you get a signal on the rising edge and the falling edge of your signal which means that you get a signal when you turn it on and when you turn it off. And that's of course because we're detecting it with an observer and an observer detects a state change. And that goes for on to off or off to on. Okay, so four lines is really easy, but what if we have a ton of lines? How do we make this more compact and more elegant? So one way that I've actually showed you already in a previous video is to encode the information and then decode it back out. That way, if we have seven lines here, we can actually encode it into a three digit code and then that code can get decoded back out into its corresponding lamp out of the seven. So if we go one, two, three, and we activate the third lamp, it travels across on just three lines and then comes back out on the third lamp. So that's pretty cool. You can actually take this a step further as long as you only want one lamp to be on at a time. Obviously, if you have multiple different lines coming in with all different types of codes, these are your best options. But if you're only worried about one lamp at a time, then what we can do is actually use signal strength. So how does this circuit work? Well, we're taking 15 different inputs and actually transmitting it just over a three wide pattern that's fairly simple and fast. And then we're getting the output over here. So if we do the one, two, three, four, fifth lamp from the end, we get the fifth lamp from the end over here. The way that it does this is first by getting a signal strength based on these levers. So if we flip this lever, for example, we're going to get a seven read by this comparator. But if we flip this lever, we're going to get a 12 read by this comparator. So each of these levers corresponds to a certain signal strength, anywhere from one to 15. After that comparator reads its data, it does something very specific. It outputs a signal which has the length of that number. So notice right now we have four selected and so we're gonna go out one, two, three, four, and then the signal is dead. So what happens is the very last repeater that gets activated in this giant line is going to be the last signal that gets a full strength signal on the other side. Then when it starts decaying, it goes all the way over to here and it perfectly lines up so that this next comparator also reads a four, just like that guy. Then it just repeats the exact same process, just mirrored. So now this comparator goes out one, two, three, four, reaches this repeater, which means that now the strength is gonna start dying from here, 15, 14, 13, 12, all the way down to four. And this last circuit here might seem a little bit complicated, but it's not. It's just the way that we're actually reading this digit. Instead of having a pulse that's equal to the length of the number, we actually want a specific lamp to resemble that number. So instead of just getting a signal that's four long here, we actually want four to show the fourth lamp. So since four is coming in here, this device gives one, two, three, the fourth lamp. And this is just called a red coder. I'm not gonna go into the high level details of it right now, but I promise it's really simple. I'll give a link in the description for how it works. But basically this is a really fast way to transmit any of 15 signals over a long distance. We can literally take any of these lamps, which will all equal different amounts of signal strength. It will travel along and get decoded out by the red coder. Also, I just remembered I had carpet mod, so let me show you this in slow motion. We flip this lever, we get a signal of 10, it goes out 10, this should be the last 15, this gives 10, out to 10, 15, 10, 
and finally decode it by the red coder into the 10th lamp. Obviously, there's tons of different ways to send data in Minecraft. These are not all the different ways, but uh, I think these are the most important and they'll hopefully be useful. But there is one other type of transmission that is fundamentally different from these, and I want to go over it because it's really cool and really useful. So what if instead of using separate lines for each signal, we just used one line over and over again, but really fast. And this is the idea of serial data transmission. So we're going to send a stream of information over one line sequentially. And serial data transmission involves two parts. We have a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter is for inputting your data, just like the left side of those uh, circuits over there. And when we press this button, it's going to send it over to the receiver. And the receiver is going to receive this information. In other words, whatever lamps you put into here, those same lamps will be on in the receiving lamps. This transmitter sends data at a speed of two ticks per bit, which means that Every single two ticks, this line is going to either send a one or a zero, AKA on or off. So for example, if we have one, zero, one, zero, then what we want to happen is this line to be on for two ticks, off for two ticks, and then on for two ticks, and then off for 10 ticks. So when we press this button, it's going to send the data. And here's what's gonna happen. This button generates a two tick pulse and a two tick pulse is connected to all these torches. And of course, these torches, when they're depowered, they unlock our data to be sent through. And since it was only a two tick pulse being generated, all of our data is just gonna be sent out at two ticks. Then after it's sent out, because there's a bunch of two tick repeaters in between each bit, our code, no matter what it is, is going to gradually shift over at a speed of, again, two ticks per bit. So whatever our code is, it's going to shift to the right and it will be outputted by our final redstone dust here. So let's press this button and watch it, but I'm going to turn the tick rate down. Let's do about maybe a tick rate of three. So we're gonna press this. It's going to unlock all of these and we get on, off, on. And that is exactly what we want because that's the code that we inputted. You can also think about it as it reading the code from right to left because that's literally what it's doing. It's reading one, then zero, then one, and then all these zeros. Now the receiver is a way for us to take that information and basically just freeze it. Take the code that has been sent along this line, put it into a bunch of repeaters that are separate from each other, and freeze it. And the way that we freeze it in Minecraft is by powering a repeater into the side of the repeater, which locks its state in place. So if any of these repeaters are powered when they are locked, they will stay powered. So when our code comes across and let's say it's powering this one and this one, when all these lock, we will only see this one and this one have retained their power. But here's the question. How do we know when to save these repeaters? And the first thought is, okay, well, why don't we just compare it to the first bit? Because obviously if you send a, a code in, you can just look at the first bit and then maybe wait a bit and then save it. And that's true, but here's the problem. Uh, there's two problems, actually. The first problem is, what if we're sending all zeros? I mean, I know it sounds dumb. Why would you ever send all zeros? But like, it's still a code that you might want to send. And so that just doesn't work. It'll never save. Uh, the second problem is, what if the first bit is like way late? Like the first bit could be up front or it could be all the way back here, which means that the first bit of your code is gonna come in at wildly different times. It's not synchronized at all. So you're gonna get different answers based on like which was the first bit. So the answer is to add another bit out front, which comes in before your code. And this bit always, always, always gets sent. It's called the signal bit and it's very special, okay? It doesn't have a lever, it just has a torch. Like that's, <laughs> it's always on. So now what's gonna happen is when we send this code, the signal bit goes first and the signal bit comes in, it comes along on this line and waits a certain amount of time for saving the repeaters. So in other words, the signal bit comes in and tells the receiver, hey, wait this amount of time before saving because uh, after this amount of time, we're gonna have a code here. And this just works perfectly. So we input our code, let's just keep it 101. And when we press this button, it gets transmitted as 101 and it perfectly saves. 
So now let's watch it in a little bit of slow motion so you can see the signal bit in action. Let's set the tick rate down to three and press this button again. So the first thing that comes is our signal bit and it's being sent on this long pause. And in the meantime, our regular code is shifting through these repeaters. Now, when the signal bit finally gets done and says, okay, time to save, we save it at the perfect amount of time. So using the signal bit method is amazing because you can literally just adjust the amount of timing. And when you adjust the amount of timing, you can send as many bits as you want. If you wanted this to be a four bit transmitter instead of eight bit, you would just make this half as big and you would probably just do something like that. But I think that's pretty much all I've got to say about serial data transmission. Uh, there's plenty of more examples online. I'll link some resources in the description as well. And if you have any questions, you can just join my Discord. You can also download the world in the description and play around with it for yourself. But that's pretty much all I got. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. Peace out.